Let's talk about Brandon Cooks, and then we'll dive into the quarterback power rankings. So for Brandon Cooks, like I said about 45 minutes ago, we were going to do a segment yesterday, got pushed off to today. What's wrong with the Brandon Cooks connection, and why does he only seem to run one route? Mm -hmm. Now it's shifted to we do know what's wrong with Brandon Cooks. He had a knee procedure after the game against the Giants. It looks like per Todd Archer. He has now a knee infection that will keep him out at least the Pittsburgh game, and we'll see from there. Okay, and since the you know this morning the the name of Devontae Adams pops up, and then you see this, and you're like, oh, this all could be the perfect timing right. for stuff like this. And then you hear um, Mike McCarthy say, we're comfortable with our receiving room. And my question yep. to you, Kevin, is is that – is that using that as a way to say we don't have the money uh, yes. without saying it? Uh, we're comfortable with our receiving room. I Look, I'd love to have the player, but I've been told we can't acquire him. Because if you think about it, look, I like Brandon Cooks a lot. I've been waiting for a year and a half for that training camp connection to shine through. Yep. But what has been the argument we've heard from people? We thought we had it in the Cleveland game, right, where yes. they had the big touchdown. Yes. So you have an amazing number one wide receiver, one of the best in the league. We're not going to argue that. But some people would argue about the viability of Cooks as a number two wide receiver. I know people have argued about Jalen Tolbert as a viable number three wide receiver. So it already feels like you're doing the old Rangers rotation where you need a four to be your two or yeah. whatever. Yes, yes. And now Cooks is going to miss at least a week. Obviously, infections can be very unpredictable. And the thought is we feel really comfortable with our guys. Maybe they do love Flournoy and Flonoy, and they were just like, we just had too many good receivers and we couldn't get rid of it. Maybe that is true. If that's the case, why can't you get anything explosive going in your pass game? Yeah. Is it all the offensive line? Yeah, you're just saying that, well, the offensive line is so poor Man. that, well, and quite honestly, <coughs> if you've, you've watched the games, if yeah. you've been watching the games, Kevin. I'm not uh, saying they've been great. Did you even watch the game? Yes, I did. All of them. Which one? <laughs> All of the Cowboys games this year. All right. I'm just making sure. Um, it, Don't at me, the, Jared. The things that I've been seeing have the Cowboys can make plays yep. in the passing game, but nothing is big downfield. And you can say, well, the league is right now. Actually, Bobby went through a topic this morning about that, saying the league is blaming uh, too high, three high safety at yeah. times uh, for this, too. So, okay, maybe that's part of it. And maybe Dak just doesn't do well there. Maybe offensive coordinators are a little spooked by it all and can't haven't quite figured out how to take advantage of it. And they're trying to have to revisit all this. And maybe the run game becomes more important, m important in that because to get those safeties to come down a little bit, to get cornerbacks. They're saying cornerbacks are li averaging lining up five yards away on the plays. And so everybody's giving a little more space to work with. Hell, I was watching uh, Duke Manyweather talk to Tyler Guyton and Terrence Steele. It's fun listening to him talk He's about so offensive good line what stuff. He does. So good. But he was saying, try to steal a yard uh, when you line up. Try to steal about a yard off of your guard so that you give yourself another extra half second from that defensive, that defensive end to give you that space. But what are we seeing a lot of right now from the referees? Yeah, like that's uh that's you're lining up improperly, illegal formation. They're throwing that flag. So what I'm saying here is is with that, maybe that is the case that the Cowboys are just a little spooked by all of the things that they're seeing in front of them. But they've been able to establish we can complete passes and move the ball down the field. What's been their Achilles heel in those moments, though? Holding false start. Yeah, a penalty that puts them in a situation now where they're second and 20. First and 20, first and 15, second and 15. And that's the thing that, Kevin, I think is really kind of holding them back from being able to do that. Because when you're there, when you're in a, a second and 15, the team knows you got to make a, a, a play seven or eight yards deep. Yeah. You have to do that. So why would we even spend time being that close to the line when we know we can just defend back here? If the Cowboys can be cleaner in their penalty game, I think that could set up more because then you're in a second and three, a third and three, and that can set up for play action, which could be bigger plays down the field. But the Cowboys just haven't been consistent enough to be able to do that. I, I hope this my that's, yeah, that's my thought. I hope this makes sense. By no means am I or anybody else happy that 
Brandon Cooks is dealing with this. Like, that Duh. sucks. That sucks across the board. I guess I'm, like, oddly relieved that it's something. Yes. And not just him, you know, just slowing down as a player, if that if that makes sense. Because one of the things we were going to talk about is, like, why does he only seem to run comeback routes? Yes. Like, that seems to be, like, the lone route that we're going out there. Maybe not even 10 yards sometimes, but he's just running up as far as he can and turning around and coming back. And you look at his completion percentages, because, Corey, I know you're big on this in terms of target versus completion percentage. Last four seasons before this year, 68, 67, 61, and 67. So you have the one outlier where it dropped a few points. Thus far this season, 47.4. Yeah. And so there is clearly something off with the route running, off with the lining up the targets and making those receptions. And now we're getting a better idea of what it is. When you hear the best, and Trayvon Diggs is you know, one of these I include, and he, I've heard him say this before. When you hear the best cornerback say, I run routes for receivers, if you only have two routes, it makes it really easy for a cornerback yeah. to say, I know what you're doing. And so on those, even on those comeback routes, Kevin, how many times did it seem he didn't get separation on that because there's a cornerback on his back by the time the ball's being delivered, and you're like, Dak, do you need to throw it harder, or do you need to anticipate that quicker? It's just there's no there's no difficulty in trying to figure out what he's going to do because he's only got a couple things that he can do. So you're right. It's like whenever you're thinking, you're listening to your car, and you're like, something's wrong. Yeah, it's going to cost me thousands of dollars to fix this. And then they're like, oh no, man, we just found. A parrot had landed in your drive shaft, and it was stuck for a while, and we got oh it out. Oh, gosh. And it only cost like 50 bucks to do it. Wow. My friend had that happen. Like a, what? It was a dog's leg. It got stuck, and he could only turn right for like four years, and then it fell out one day, and he was able to turn left. Did again. he run over a dog? Oh, yeah. my gosh. It was in high school. And so the dog's he, leg stuck yeah. into a wheel. Yeah. And the bone wouldn't break as the wheel was going about Holy. 60 miles an hour? Yeah, and then finally Holy one day God. it did. But he would have to, like, drive around the block to pull into his driveway. <laughs> There's This isn't real. I'm dead serious, dude. I'm dead serious. Oh, Kevin, my gosh. Do you believe this story? I. This is going to give me nightmares. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, I, but that's why I said a parrot. Oh, but then I felt like I had to tell walk. the rest oh, of the story. Oh, that's so sad. So, but then again, like I said, you thought it was going to cost a lot of money, but yeah. now it's this. And with Brandon Cooks, but then the you, bone breaks. You were like, maybe the offense oh is just gosh. bad, and now you're like, oh, oh, he was hurt. So that is that is a that helps you out a little bit there. And for the record, I do. We're going to go back to Adams for a second. I do think the Cowboys knocked on the door about Devonte Adams, but I think it went something like this. Is he going to play without a new deal? Would you take a sixth mm-hmm. or maybe a fifth? And they're like. No, where you want a second plus. I I actually think it went different than you, Kevin. Okay. Because Rossini said that the Cowboys checked in. Yeah. So I feel like they picked up the phone and went, hey, and the Raiders were like, what's up? And they said, this true? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, all right, man, think, talk, talk to you later. <laughs> and then hung okay. up and they were like, we did check in. Okay. Uh, so. That is a very fair point.